this is this is this is this is this is this is this this is this is this is this is this is this is the local music revolution the local music revolution 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 Hello and welcome to the Local Music Revolution. I am your host, Ogre. As you do know, I will be hosting this thing. Let's get to this. Today on the show, I have a band out of Southern California called Psychedelica. Uh, The story behind this is I post episodes and updates in Facebook groups because I think there's a mass people there and it's a very, very easy way to promote to a lot of different people in a lot of different areas. So I utilize that. Um, At one point, I went on the Facebook groups and I was trying to round up more musicians to get more interviews and um, Will, as you will hear in the interview, the guitarist for Psychedelica, he contacted me. But the thing is, I didn't know it at the time, and it took me about three weeks before I decided to contact him, and I saw the message, and it was kind of a little goof up. It was kind of funny. So we scheduled the interview, and we were off. Uh, This band is very, very interesting mix of genres. I kind of... Uh, I don't know if they'll take offense. I'm sorry, guys, if you do, but I kind of feel like it's a stoner vibe meets 70s uh, rock, and I really like that. I'm a huge fan of Alice Cooper. I really, really like The Doors. Um, It's just, it takes me back to that kind of music. It's really, really awesome. Even more awesome than that, they have a metal vibe. And if anybody knows me, they know that I am a huge metal fan. I love metal. That's my genre. That's what I go for. And it's really cool to see what these guys are doing, mixing all of these genres that are similar but so different at the same time. Another thing I want to point out is the fact that Will does guitar solos. There are some bands that are just completely terrified of doing guitar solos. And, you know, it it is a scary thing. But in this kind of genre, guitar solos are incredibly important and incredibly awesome to have in your songs. And it's really, really cool to see that Will is bringing this clash of elements and guitar solos to the music. It's really cool, man. Before I get too far into this, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, Always, you guys have been so great listening to all of these bands and artists that I have on the show. Thank you so much for being such great listeners. I also want to thank Stringjoy for being a sponsor. You guys are completely awesome. I love what you guys are doing with the company, and thank you so much for being part of the podcast. If you are interested in getting strings from Stringjoy, here's what you do. You go onto their website. They have two options. You can either get their tension-based strings, which have the gauges, kind of like the ones you get at Guitar Center. They are fresh, straight out of the factory, straight to you. Or you can go and you can email them, explain what you want with the custom guitar strings, and they will suggest a set for you to help you out with your needs. That's all you have to do. When you get to check out, please enter the promo code LOCAL. That's L-O-C-A-L. And you will get a discount for being a listener of the Local Music Revolution. You can contact them by going to stringjoy.com, facebook.com slash stringjoy. And they are on Twitter and Instagram at stringjoystaff. For the podcast, this podcast, The Local Music Revolution, you can contact me personally by going to facebook.com slash the local music revolution, to Twitter at TLMR Podcast, on Instagram at the local music revolution, and now we are on YouTube, The Local Music Revolution. Go subscribe, add, comment, follow, all of those good things. 
As always, from the beginning, this podcast is on iTunes. All you have to do is go to the podcast section of iTunes and look up The Local Music Revolution. For Android users, go to Stitcher. You can look up The Local Music Revolution on both accounts. Subscribe, add, comment, and rate. Let me know what you think of the podcast. Finally, this podcast is run through WordPress. What you do, you go to thelocalmusicrevolution.wordpress.com and you follow that blog. Things are constantly being updated and added to this podcast and the blog section. Um, I do the random starts. If you haven't been following, they're very simple. Basically, you get up in the morning, you push random on your MP3 player, your phone, or whatever music device. You screen capture the first song. You write a little bit of information about it, and you post it on social media. Let people know what you're listening to. I do every Friday and Monday because I think the weekend should start with music, and the week should start with music. Enough of me rambling. Let's get to the interview. This is Psychedelica. All right, and I'm here with Scott and Will from Psychedelica. How are you guys doing today? We're doing pretty good. Fabulous. How about you? I am hot as hell right now, man. I live in Tulare in the Central Valley of California, and it's terribly hot. It's it's unbelievably hot. I hate this place. So, yeah, it's it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, well, we're we're in Southern California in uh, the San Fernando Valley, so it's pretty hot here. Yeah, it's for us. sweltering. I'm so sorry, guys. We need to move out of California. You you want to move up north? You know, we can start a whole music scene up there in like Alaska or something. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we have a we have a new single coming out called California. Yeah, I wrote a song oh, really? called California. It's about where we grew up, so we can't. We, we're stuck here now. <laughs> oh, you guys just had to do it. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, before we get too far into this, um, can you uh, tell me who we're missing and what their function in the band is? Okay. Well, right now, who we have with us here is me and Scott. The singer and guitar player me and scott and then we have the people missing are eric simian he plays rhythm guitar marcus van Vis on the drums and zach mandola on the bass awesome awesome and uh how did you come up with the name psychedelica i came up with it a long time ago um when we were in uh, junior high probably seventh or eighth grade and uh I don't know, we were just, I just thought the uh, whole idea of, I was really into psychedelic music at the time, and I just really thought it was a groovy thing, and I just thought of the name, and I asked Willie if he liked it, and he said it was cool, and the other guy that was in the band at the time liked it too, you know, another guy, kind of kind of just a random pop in our head thing, haven't gone <laughs> back since. <laughs> that is awesome, man. That's always how the best stuff happens. It's either mistakes or just random nonsense that makes everything great. Uh, so you guys were established in 2007. Um, uh, how old are you guys? Are you guys like in your mid-20s right now? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm 23. Okay. I'm the oldest member of the band. I'm almost 25. I'm going to be <laughs> 25 on August 27th. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. That, that's the other, awesome. It's Eric's birthday today, as a matter of fact. He's turning 21. That's why he's not with us. He's in San Francisco celebrating oh. with all his... Well, yeah, happy birthday, other, other, Eric. Yeah, the other band members are all around the same age as well, uh, early 20s, 23, 22. So, so you guys have grown up together, essentially. Um, how does that actually work with the writing of your music? Does it uh, does it help knowing somebody that well, or is it sometimes hindering? Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it is hindering. You know, when you know somebody so well, it's easy to, to just take their idea and say, sorry, bud, it sucks, you know, throw it out the window. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, with the writing process has always kind of been the same. You know, uh, Scott, the lead guy, he, he writes most of the stuff, and then we kind of arrange it and... As a guitar player, I, I just make it more interesting and add my lead and kind of change it around and, and make it more marketable, shorten the song. And stuff sometimes like that. Willie comes up with the riffs, too. A <laughs> lot of the heavier riffs Willie came up with, as a matter of fact. 
That's awesome. That that really is. And and you guys market your band as classic rock meets metal. Um, so who is the metalhead in the band? Is that you, Will? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as calling it metal because of where metal has gone today. Metal is kind of a very broad term now, and you know, a lot of metal has double bass drums and, and growling vocals, and that's not really something we do. But when we say metal, it's more like a hard rock or early, the early stages of metal, kind of like, like Ozzy Osbourne. Make it or Ozzy Osbourne or Van Halen. Yeah, stuff like that. So the real metal. <laughs> they consider that metal. Yeah. <laughs> I consider it rock and roll. <laughs> I consider they, I consider stuff like Pantera and Metallica and Megadeth, that's metal to me. Yeah, yeah, but, we're we're into that too. We're not we're not <laughs> quite all that heavy. heavy. We're not quite as heavy as as say like Pantera, maybe not even as heavy as Megadeth, but you know, kind of like that Ozzy Osbourne, Van Halen. Head. Yeah, yeah. I did hear that when I watched you guys' music video. I did hear that that classic rock influence, but something else I saw that I really wanted to touch on is Will. You have that SGV like weird guitar. Um, that is that a Zach Wild one? I mean, uh, no, actually, Zach Wild copied me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, it's just um, you know I, I really like the guitar. Um, I like the idea of having an all white guitar, and uh, I, I actually play an SG too. Oh no! Nice. I, I don't play it as often anymore, but um, I started off playing an SG my whole life, so I really I really liked the SG thing. And then when I when I saw that, you know, it was basically like an SG with a touch of metal, you know, kind of like yeah. our band. So yeah. I figured it was a good guitar that suited me. And not only that, but it, it's got a, a Floyd Rose uh, bridge on it. And you know, I, I'm kind of into that, like, that uh, Dimebag Daryl kind of dive bomb oh, harmonic. Yes. Kind of. That right there, that is one of the pinnacle of metal lead guitars. If you can't pull that off, then it's not really lead. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, you you have the the Zach Wild signature. So are you a huge fan of Zach Wild, or is that just you know coincidence? The shape got you first. Um, you know, I am I am a quite a, I, I do like Zach Wild. You know, Black Label Society and uh, the Zach Wild years of Ozzy were real influential on me. I like Zach Wild a lot. It's actually not a Zach Wild signature guitar. Really? Because his guitar, yeah, his guitar is the uh, it's a Gibson model, and mine is a Dean. So oh. it's not actually a Zach Wild uh, model, but it is the same shape. I so, thought I mean, he actually went through Dean for a while to get uh, that shape, but I may be mistaken. That's actually really cool because you know it's you know an SG and it's a Dean. That's that's just awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. All right, <laughs> all right. Let's let's get back to you guys. I'm sorry. Um. So yeah, you guys have a new album out, and uh, um, can you talk about that just for a second? Um, I- explain like what's the title, how it came about, how you guys, uh, how the reception has been. Okay, well, uh, it's an album. It's a self-titled album because it's our first actual piece of music that we've you know distributed um, online and stuff as a as a full album. So we self-titled Psychedelica. And um, you know, as of now, it's been doing it's been doing pretty good. It's only been out for 30 days, so you know we've had we've had some good feedback. We we got we got a couple of reviews done. We got a review you guys can check out on uh, Magic Monster Records, done by Seth Styles. It was a pretty good review, and we we have another nice. one coming from uh, our friends at uh, High Wire Days Magazine. Nice. But uh, uh, you know, we, right now we've we've just been focusing mainly on just promotion for the album and, and sales and you know getting it out there just you know distributing it putting it out online and on all the online music stores and stuff like that but uh it's been an album that we've been working on for years on end um we actually had another album before this that we never quite finished and put out and um it was definitely more psychedelic of an album the first one you know nice. and that's it kind of went with the name a little more but this album was the first real legitimate product done at a a good studio that we were able to put out so that's why i got the self-titled psychedelic name so so you guys you guys went through and 
um, you recorded in a real studio. How was that experience for you guys? Did you guys, uh, did you live track everything or was it individual? Um, it was all it was, individual track. It was mostly individual, but there was a little, it was a little bit of both. Um, I, I think there was a couple, did two it. tracks on there that we did live. Yeah. But you couldn't the tell, last, you couldn't really tell the difference. No. The last nice. Comfort zone. Oh. I'm sorry, comfort zone and what was the other one? Uh, Rebels. Rebels. Oh, nice. Nice. And those were the, the live tracked uh, recordings? Yeah, uh, mostly live tracked. I mean, there it, there was a little bit of individual tracks just adding uh you know like percussion tracks and stuff like that yeah the, so uh the the lyrical content to what you guys are doing who who manages that is that you scott or is there an input of the band yeah, I, I wrote most of the lyrics if not all of them actually nice <laughs> but uh, i had a little help with my friend <laughs> uh so so you have outside Got input it. on what you're writing you know, I, I'm intrigued by uh, Sands of Time. One thing I wanted to point out was the lyrics of Sands of Time are pretty uh, interesting if you listen to them, because it's all about, um, like, Egypt and the pyramids and, like, the hieroglyphs on the ancient tombs about the otherworldly beings that they tend to talk about on the History Channel and stuff like that. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, and that song says it was twas written on the wall of the ancient tomb. Otherworldly beings will show us to our doom, and I just I like that chorus. And uh, I don't know, the other lyrics are uh, pretty good. Comfort zone, I really like. Most of them are telling a story, you know. We, yeah. we try to make the lyrical content uh, have meaning, you know, and have uh, a yeah. potency to them, you know, not just saying, you know. Yeah, the, real, real lyrics. I love you, know, baby, this and that, you know, we try to tell a story and, and yeah. put some potency into the lyrical content. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what great music does. Um, at least um, what I found is I like music that I can relate to, um, whether it's just a part of it or the entirety I have to relate to the music for me to think it's any any good. Um, so how did you guys, how do you guys feel about the work that you've done so far on this album? Um, do you guys actually listen back to it? Well, I'll let Will go first. Well, I mean, the album has been in my CD player since it came out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've listened to the album so many times that... Uh, you know, I can I can really pick it apart and know what I really you know liked that I did and what I thought I could have done better or whatever. But yeah, we really do we pick it apart and really listen to the product. You know. Yeah, for me, for me, the album is like pretty much everything that I've been trying to do for my whole life. You know, my whole nice. life I've been trained like practicing singing you know i've been a singer literally my whole life you know and i wrote these songs and these songs took years to accumulate you know onto this disc and for me i'm very proud i'm really very proud to be able to sing along with my own album and there's nothing like it you know i yeah. mean it's just like i'm totally stoked man well congratulations one thing, one thing about the album is you know uh there's only six tracks on it which most people when they hear that they think six tracks it's not a very long album but the tracks themselves are pretty long there's some long songs on there you know and um it's both a good thing and a bad thing you know it's a good thing because you know since we try to say we're playing classic rock and stuff you know the songs have potency and a lot of classic rock bands have really long songs yeah but uh as far as our new music goes and because we're writing our second album already we're in the studio right now Wow. Um, as far as the, as far as the second album goes, we're we're really focusing on trying to become a more marketable band and and shortening the songs and and making them a little bit more poppy and a little bit more marketable, just so that we have more options when it comes to radio play or making a music video or something. Because you know, as cool as a six minute song is, you know, it takes you on a on a on a journey. But um, you can't really make a six minute music video because how many people are going to sit there and watch a video for six minutes? You know. Yeah. So that was that, that's been the main issue with the band, with the with the album was just its length of the track. But um, like I said, it's both a good thing and a bad thing. You know, it's still short and sweet. You know, the album itself is uh, only thirty-seven minutes, which yeah, is pretty thirty-seven short. and a half minutes. So it's, really? It's somewhat short. Wow, thirty-seven minutes. That's awesome, man. <laughs> I, I like short albums because you can get into it, and when they're done, you can be like, "Oh, that was 
awesome, but it's over. <laughs> and then you play it over again. But not everybody can be like um, like Dream Theater or like Machine Head that have so many long songs. Um, I can see why you guys are trying to shorten it down. I mean, uh, I- I've seen set lists that only have like five songs in it. How long do you guys get at a normal show to play? Um, usually we won't take a show unless it's, you know, 40 minutes. I mean, if it's a, if it's a bigger opportunity, then obviously we'll, we'll try to play our shorter songs and, and play a shorter amount of time, maybe 30, 35 minutes, but nothing, definitely nothing less than 30 minutes. Cause you know, we can't really showcase any of our stuff like that. You know, uh, I, ideally though, we would like, you know, a 45 to an hour set can really do us in. Um, we just played our album release show on the 1st of May and uh, that we had an hour and a half so we were able to play the album in entirety and then showcase a little bit of what we have for our next album a little like some of the new stuff um, the single we have coming out California and stuff like that so that set was uh, that was ideal you know because we had we had a night that we were able to do what we really wanted with you know we played everything we wanted and it went really well that is great Congratulations, guys, on everything. Um, so now, can you tell me about the song Once in a Blue Moon? Yeah, I wrote that song when I was all depressed. <laughs> it says, once in a blue moon, I can be in a good mood. Oh, nice. Once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> once in a while, I can actually smile. That's probably one That's of the, not actually how I feel nowadays. Actually, nowadays is quite the opposite. I walk <laughs> around with a smile on my face every freaking place I go, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, life's just gotten so much better for me personally since the album's come out because I'm just stoked to be listening to it. But anyway, yeah, Once in a Blue Moon is uh, it's probably one of our more psychedelic tracks on the album just because... Um, I, I play like I have a phaser pedal going off, and it, it kind of yeah. gives it like a yeah. underwater effect, kind of more like trippy. Yeah, if you know what it is. You know, it's kind of it's definitely one of the more psychedelic sounding songs, and uh, it's always been one of my favorites because I, I got two leads in it, and as a solo player, you know, that's where I like to showcase my thing. So having those, you know, two leads. But it's but it's also kind of a lull in the storm, you know, yeah. when you're because <laughs> the album is, you know. It between um, Once in a Blue Moon is between Hellbreak Clues and Sands of Time on the album, so which are the two know. heaviest it's of the track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Once the Once the we Blue Moon. We did that on purpose. Yeah, Once the <laughs> Blue Moon is kind of uh, the, the album. Uh, the songs are all strategically placed on the album. We thought long and hard about the placement of the songs on the album. Nice. All right, well, guys, this is Once in a Blue Moon. <laughs>
pages of my mind Hoping that the smallest bit of joy is what I find there Focus time, focus time, girl. One of these days, you know, I'll leave this world behind. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cause once in a That was Once in a Blue Moon. All right, Will, Scott, you guys started talking about uh, the, the album placement, how you put the songs together, the strategies that you used and everything like that. I want to go into it more because that's one of the things that I've always loved about music is how the albums are put together. When I'm writing my own, I try to figure out if the songs will tell a story and what I want them to say themselves. So can you go into how you guys decided to structure the six songs on your album? Okay, well, uh, starting with the first track, the first track was the easiest one to know where it should be placed because of the fact that there's kind of a long, weird, very weird intro. Um, It's kind of like, it starts off with bagpipes. It starts off kind of uh, setting the mood in in, uh, in, in kind of a weird spot, you know? It's um, the song Remember the Clover, which is the first track. It's about Ireland and... Yeah, it's called Remember in the Clover. England, so there's, the there's like bagpipes playing at the beginning. So it's kind of, we had to put that one first. The lyrics, sure. It wouldn't really make any sense going anywhere else. You know what awesome. I mean? And yeah. then, um, uh, other than that, the placement of the songs, what, what took a big role in where we're going to put them was the fact that some of them were a, real heavy. We have an acoustic song, you know, so you don't really want to put, um, you know, Stands of Time right next to Comfort Zone because Comfort Zone starts off with an acoustic and Stands of Time ends with a dueling guitar solo and you know it's kind of um, 
they wouldn't go well together. They wouldn't mesh, you know. So we had to kind of flow with flow with the album, you know. So yeah, yeah. we went from after Remember the Clover, we went into Hell Breaks Loose, which is the song that we did our first music video for. On it's on YouTube and a couple of other places. But you know that that was a, a short. That's the shortest song on the album, which is kind of why it came second. You know, it's a heavy song. You know, it helps with the hook. Yeah, yeah it kind of. Exactly. It's kind of like a quick jab after like the lull. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And then, uh, like Scott was saying earlier, once the blue moon came in between Hellbreak's loose and at the time. So after Hellbreak's loose, but the wolf's teeth still show. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it's once the blue moon chorus, the chorus is a little heavier. You know, so I mean. Yeah. All the songs just kind of flow, you know. But once they're all the most, still the same. I mean, style. you guys just heard it. You know, it's got that that slow verse, kind of flowy with the heavier chorus and, and the guitar solos. So it was perfect to go in between two heavier songs. You know, um, after Once in the Blue Moon, Sands of Time. You know, that's the heaviest song on the whole album. So that's the one Scott was talking about. Um, all the uh, the Egyptology and uh, talking about the uh, the the tunes and, and, and the cyclones in the desert. Yeah, what do you have to say, Scott? Well, I've already elaborated on the lyrical content of Sands of Time, but um, what I do have to say was after Sands of Time was Rebels, and uh, that's a good one, too. That's the longest song on the album, which is... But also, that song incorporates elements of harder rock and classical rock, you know, classic rock at the same time, you know? I'm really stoked about that one. Rebels is kind of like the uh, hold your head high, you got a flag, you know, just like the name of the song. Yeah, that's you know? kind of like the no, only Rebels. real, politi- I mean, not political, but like, it's just kind of the anti-authority song on the album, you know, the only song that kind of expresses any kind of anti-authority on the album, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah. And then we're not really big on that kind of thing either. But <laughs> Yeah, zone all that really talks about comfort zone, zone was the, was the obvious yeah. closer, you know. Just like remember the clover was the obvious uh, opener, comfort yeah. zone was the obvious closer for the album because that's um, that's a song that probably has the most meaning to us band members, just because you know that's uh, it's it's a uh, it's not very hard rocking. It's more slow and. Uh, uh, it's just more feely, more vibey, you know, like Comfort yeah. Zone, you know. Uh, if you hear the song, I think you're going to play that for them pretty soon. Um, comfort Zone is is uh, it's probably one of our favorites, you know, and then it, it fades away, you know. Instead of having an abrupt ending or anything like that, the album the album just goes away on a fade, you know, which fades back into the intro so of the album. So if you want, you can listen to the album five times in a row, and you won't even know where the beginning or the end is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, man. So you guys talked about a music video before. Can you go into that process, how you guys um, chose that song for for the video and how it was yeah, recording uh, that? Yeah, well, um, just like I was... The earlier one. Just like I was saying before, um, with choosing a music video, it goes back to, you know, lengths of the songs and, and uh, stuff like that. You know, um, you, you can't really make a music video for a six-minute song if you plan on people to watching it all the way uh, to watch it all the way through. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we filmed yeah. it at Sony Point. So for for that song, choosing that was, you know, I hate to say it, but it was pretty much our only option because it's uh, it's a two and a half, you know, almost like it's about a three-minute song. You know, so it was the obvious choice for our first music video. You know, we, we wanted to do something, you know, something different with it, you know, instead of just uh, in a room like, you know, most bands would do, which we did. I mean, also, the, the music video, it, it's cut in between us in a little studio, kind of like a live show performance. Nice. Cut with um, outdoors. I don't know if you guys are familiar in this uh, SoCal area. There's a there's an outdoors hike, hiking area called Stony Point, and it's kind of just real rocky, real... Uh, you know, it's in the Chatsworth area, kind of like the, the uh, where the old Manson caves are and stuff like that. It's real. Wow. It, it was a for us. It was a choice. You know, we wanted to do the desert, but um, Stony Point is right it's in our a backyard. Little you know? spot in our hometown. Exactly. So it was. We thought it was something different. You know, and um, it kind of goes with the song. You know, the song is uh, 
kind of like a, a hectic uh, hell breaks loose. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a real rocking song. Uh, when I was doing research for this this podcast, um, that was the song that I I started off with because there was a video and I could see who I was talking to and you know, um, it, it was really I I really enjoyed that song. That song was really awesome. Awesome, we appreciate that. Um, you know, another thing about that video is uh, as much as we like it, and that's probably the oldest song on on the record. Um, that song. That song is. We've had that song for over five years now. You know that was uh, wow. that was that was the first song that we recorded for the record. Um, we that's definitely the oldest song. But um, you know, as far as if that's the only thing people saw of us, if they've never seen us before and they just see that video, you know, we would definitely appeal more to the metalheads and stuff. It's definitely a heavier song. But um, that's why our next music video. We're doing another video for a new single, which will be off our second album or our, our single coming out later this year. It's called "Bye Bye Baby." It's, it's a more poppy song. It's it's short to the and point. We plan on making a music song. video for that. Yeah, that'll be that'll be our our newer music video. So in that way, when people, if all they see of us is our music videos, they can kind of get a better idea of um, the range that we have between the classic sound and the heavy sound so that they don't just think we're a heavy metal band you know because that's not what we are we're we have more we have like a little, black status than van halen we got we got a range <laughs> to it you know what i mean we, we have slower you know classic sounding right. you know all and other sounding songs, songs <laughs> just like any other band like a led zeppelin all right so so you guys keep talking about uh sabbath and van halen i have to ask you guys okay What's your favorite era of Van Halen? I like um, Van Halen's first album and second album the best. I like every album by Van Halen. Don't get me wrong. Really, even but with Sammy Van Hagar? Two is off the hook. What? Even the one with Sammy Hagar? Um, you know, uh, I don't have anything against. Sammy I Hagar. personally like. Uh, I like Sammy Rob Hagar a lot, but. Uh, Van Halen, like I said, every I, I'm familiar, I'll put it to you this way. I'm not going to tell you who I like better, but I'm familiar <laughs> with every Van Halen album with Van, uh, Lee Rod, but no Van Halen album with Sammy Hagar. So you, you can pretty much figure who I like. <laughs> nothing against, like I said, nothing against Sammy Hagar. He reminds me a lot of Lou Graham from Foreigner and David Coverdale. Nice, you know, nice. I'm really into those kind of singers. They're really good. They're better singers than me. But and I really am influenced by greatness. I recognize greatness when I see it. <laughs> so, so now, what era of Black Sabbath do you like better? I mean, there's there's the Dio era. There's Ozzy. Believe somewhere in there there was somebody, but I really somebody else, but I don't really remember. Um, what era do you enjoy most? Um, you know what? I'll be honest with you. That's too hard of a question to answer. It's, it's <laughs> apples and oranges. To compare the two, I think that um, Heaven and Hell is one of Sabbath's best albums. And I like I like I like Ronnie James Dio as a singer more than Ozzy Osbourne. But I think that Ozzy Osbourne is more in a Black Sabbath singer. You know, I yeah, I've yeah. seen seen both of them live. I saw Dio before he passed, and you know, Dio will always be one of my favorite singers. And I love the Heaven Hell album. He went to Dio's funeral in Forest Lawn. Oh wow! But um, you know, as far as uh, favorite Black Sabbath years go, that's so hard to answer. You know, I, I love <laughs> Volume Four, but I you know, I want to just say that. Uh, Heaven and Hell is absolutely one of the greatest albums ever recorded in rock history. But Ozzy sang on about eight Sabbath albums before Dio ever sang for Black Sabbath. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you kind of got to give Ozzy the credit having sung on Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And that album I grew up with, every single <laughs> album by Black Sabbath I grew up with, every early one anyway. So, I mean, to say that I like one better than the other is kind of hard, you know, and it's not about competition. See that? But, and yeah, that's, that, that's a great way to look at it. it. It's just there's something about Dio um, by himself that just completely I, I completely enamored with that man. Um, but I saw Ozzy with Sabbath in '05 and just they they blew me away, man. Just these old 
yeah. guys just playing yeah. the like heaviest metal at that show and it was at Ozfest, you know <laughs> and they just they were yeah. rocking that show it was amazing yeah oh yeah ozzy's absolutely one of my biggest influences i grew up we used to cover sweetly oh we still oh nice do. we still cover mr crowley we oh. love covering ozzy and black sabbath all that is just it's like what I grew up listening to and what I'm influenced by. You know, Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman are my favorite uh, Ozzy solo albums. Oh, Those really? are the two first uh, solo albums by Ozzy Osbourne, if you don't know already. Yeah. And, and those are the only two albums by Ozzy Osbourne that feature Randy Rhodes on guitar, which is my favorite Ozzy Osbourne guitar player, as opposed to Zach Wilde. Willie likes Zach Wilde. I like Randy Rhodes. So my favorite guitar player of all time is probably Randy Rhodes. You know, see, um, I love uh, I love Jakey e. Lee a lot too. Don't get see, me wrong. that's yeah. that's the problem is nobody remembers that Jakey e. Lee did two of the great Ozzy albums, and, and it's a sad part because he was that middleman that nobody really remembers. But Ultimate Sin is mm-hmm. uh, incredible. Oh, uh, dude, Bark at the Moon has been my ringtone for ten years. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. I, I, uh, I uh, this is a little bit off subject, but I must say, you know, as much as we're into, you know, Black Sabbath and, and Van Halen and, and heavier bands like that, we, we really tried to go more in a vocal direction. And, uh, you know, we're really big on bands like the Eagles and um, Cosby yeah. Stills and Nash and Young and, yeah, and very harmony popular. vocal work. And, and I think people will really see that in our next album. You know, this, this first yeah. album was, was a little more rocking and uh, a little more deep, you know, I, would, I think the hook. I think that we're we're definitely going in a more vocal, uh, yeah, we're area. You know, we're we're real big on the Eagles. You know, that's that's we're our favorite. We're inclined to want to sing together. You know, and yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. He took the words right out of my mouth. That that's that's great, guys. That's um, trying to figure that out. You know, um, vocals. You guys are up front, and just being able to to have such a good vocal bass is going to make that the bands just shine you know and uh it's great to see that you guys are are wanting to showcase something like that it hasn't been done in a while and it's it's kind of sad that that that's put on the back burner now yeah i just want to say because i'm the singer in the band that like i just we're absolutely vocal orientated you know and one of my favorite singers among Robert Plant and Dio and Ozzy, in particular one is Freddie Mercury. Oh, He's one of my yes. biggest influences. Not just as a singer, but as a performer. As a well. performer, as a musician, I'm just really influenced by the guy and uh and I and I feel like my life has been an incorporation of every rock and roll band. You know? We've also yeah. been real big on Boston too, you know. Oh yeah, Boston, oh, Boston Brad yes. Delphi. Matt Delp, the singers from Boston, we're big on that. You know, we're big on uh, uh, um, all the Kansas. You know, all the, the Eagles. Favorite every favorite every favorite classic favorite. rock band. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. Um, can we? Uh, is there anything that you haven't discussed about Sands of Time that you'd like to talk about? Um. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what, Sands of Time. Uh, one cool thing about Sands of Time was um, back in, uh, I, I believe it was 2010, we had a little bit of a, a lineup change when we lost our bass player. We were looking for a new bass player. And uh, Scott here, he's got a stepbrother, Eric Simeon, whose birthday it is. We talked about him earlier. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, when uh, when we were looking for a bass player, you know, his little brother, Eric, he was only 17, 18 at the time, you know, he... He was, he was at every show, front row every show, knew all those words. You know, he started playing guitar, and uh, I, I jammed out with him, and, and the kid knew our songs. He knew how to play them, and I never even taught him to him, you know? So uh, <laughs> as far as stands of time goes, when we were looking for a bass player, you know, uh, he told me, I was like, hey, man, you want to play bass? You know, what's going on? And, and he said, no, man, I don't want to play bass. I want to play guitar. And, I, you know, I told him, uh, you know, we're not really looking for another guitar player. We're, we're looking for a bass player, you know? And, and he said, well, when you're looking for a guitar player, let me know. And basically, uh, when we got a new bass player, we said, let's try this out, and we threw Eric in the mix. And uh, right around that time we, was when we were writing Sands of Time, and that was really, that, that song was a debut for Eric. Oh, on, nice. nice. Excuse me, on guitar. 
Um, you know, the, the first lead solo in Sands of Time is me playing my lead, which is, it's a more, it's a little bit more shreddy. It's more Randy Rose, a little Zach Wild action. But the second solo in the song, which closes the song, is Eric's solo. And that was pretty much the first solo that he had as his debut in his band. So, you know, I think he did an awesome job on that solo. Um, you know, and that was kind of introducing Eric into the light, into the band Psychedelica. Nice. Well, <laughs> um, is there anything you guys want to add? Yeah, I want to add um, that I think this album is the culmination of my life's work oh, on Sands of Time. Um, Sands of Time, I think that uh, it's one of the best sung tracks on the album. It's, it's the heaviest track on the album. That's, that's yeah. pretty much it. Nice. Pretty much the only screaming you hear on the album is <laughs> from Sands of Time. <laughs> Or it's also it's actually also Scott's uh, debut in, in what he's capable of as a as a high pitched singer. You know he's got he he does he does one note in particular. I'm sure you guys will all find that note when you listen to it. But there's one note in particular that he hits that's kind of uh, that's what lets everybody know what he's capable of. And that's uh, you know, that's that's pretty much right before my solo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, this is Sands of Time.
and that was Sands of Time. So, gentlemen, you briefly touched on the fact that you guys have songs that aren't on this EP. Are you guys in the studio doing anything right now? We are. We're we're in the studio now, and we're working on a whole new set of material. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, yeah. later on this year, you know, everybody keep an eye out. We're we're gonna be we're gonna be releasing a lot of new stuff. You know, we have a, we have our our two main songs that we've been working on right now that we're trying to promote are Bye Bye Baby in California, which are kind of uh, Bye Bye Baby is like a straight to the point kind of poppy rock song. Short. We're gonna do a video we're for it. Get the chicks. It's, yeah, that one, that one's for the ladies. <laughs> and then you got California, which is uh, it's about our hometown. You know, it's, uh, it really touches heart with it's us. It's all about paradise. Uh, nice. That's our paradise. But, uh, yeah, you know, just the, the new stuff that we're working on and uh, just trying to get out there and promoting. Right, right now we're, we're really focusing on the album. We just put out and promoting the album, but... Um, you know, we're, we're, you know, you keep going, the snowball effect, you know, we're just rolling down the hill right now, and, and you know, we're, we're, we're on a roll. We're on a roll, and we're, we're trying to keep it going and putting out new stuff, and, yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you guys... You're you're in the studio right now. Um, is there anything that you guys are changing from the first one? You said earlier that you picked apart the CD. Um, is there anything specific that you you saw that you wanted to change um, or do better in this this uh, time around? That's a good question. Um, honestly, um, not a whole lot. It's kind of on the same wavelength. Our songs are all kind of a certain way, and. Um, like I said, the first album has its way, and uh, yeah, we're changing a little bit. You know, we're kind of elaborating on what we did before, not changing too much. We have still got the hard, we really, heavy rock sound. We really want to shorten the songs. And yeah, make it more we want to make it more, a little more promotable. Just to open our options but, up, you know, the radio and, play. And this time, we want to have a little bit more background vocals. For example, on this next album, we're planning on having a song called "On My Way to Hell." which Willie and Eric do the honors on background vocals, and they sound pretty good. They don't think they do, but I uh, think they sound great. Country. It's a, we're, we're still working on a lot of those songs, but it's still kind of along the same wavelength, if you get what I'm saying. As the first nice. album, only kind of like we're getting a little better. I feel like we're getting better, you know? So you guys also it's talked about... You you guys also talked about getting at the other members in the band uh, back in 2010. Can you talk about how your process uh, for writing or recording or playing shows has changed since you got the new players in the band? Well, I mean, luckily for us, um, the changes that, that needed to be made, I mean, as much as we love those guys and they put in, they had a lot to do with our early stages, um, the the main thing, you know, it's not like we, we never, we didn't lose our songwriter. We didn't lose any lead proportion. You know, it was, it was a rhythm section change. So, okay. um, you know, it was like, it was a bass player change. We've gone through a couple of bass players. We added a guitar player. So uh, as far as the writing of the music and stuff, you know, um, our me, band I, I say, me and Scott, me and Scott have been in this band. I've been in this band since I was 12 years old. I'm, right. I'm a now. little older than him, Jeez. so I might've been 13. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, it's kind of we kind of me and him have stuck together in, literally as a partnership in this. It's yeah. about 2000, late 2003, early 2004. So the songwriting, the songwriting itself hasn't um, been affected by that, but you know, um, a little bit. You know, he, uh, our our first bass player, um, Evan Cordone, we called him Schnazzy. You know, he was real. <laughs> he was real. Uh, he was real. He was like he was like a geezer butler. That's that's where our our Black Sabbath came from was from Ooh. from him. You know, he was a real geezer bass player. You know, and then we went on to Troy Maldonado, who was real musically inclined on the bass. You know, and uh, but he was more into tool and dream yeah, theater. And exactly. So we changed, we changed we a little liked bit, it, but we're not so in, inclined toward. It. Yeah, but now we're lucky. We're lucky to to have uh, Zach uh, Mendola on the bass because he's more of a classic rock player you know he has more of a blues driven drive to him so you know we don't get in as many arguments yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, he was, he's the new guy still you know he'll always be the new guy so i love having troy in the band 
and Evan, you know, it's another, we're, we're it's still another friends with those guys. Another you know? personality. It's another head to butt with. Yeah, we're we're still friends with those guys. You know, I seen Evan last night. Um, Not Evan, no. I talked to Troy. I talked to Troy the other day. You know, um, we're still friends with those guys, but you know, we're lucky to have the members we have now because we're we're, we're definitely getting more rootsy and more classic rocky. You know, and uh, that's what that's what we're going for. That's that's our sound. You know. That is awesome. Um, so we're we're coming to the end of of this third segment here, um, and I was wondering what are your guys' plans for the future? You say that you're in the studio, uh, you got the two singles that you're talking about, and the music video. Is there anything beyond that, or is that your forefront that you want to get done this this year or in the future? Um, well, as far as this year goes, I mean, I hate to say it, but we do work somewhat slow. Because it's, you know, masterpieces aren't written overnight, you know. But, uh, you know, um, hopefully if we can have our next album out by the beginning of next year, we'll be stoked on that. Um, you know, just uh, putting out some music. And what we're really focusing on right now is, is, like, the marketing aspect. Because, you know, we've been in this band a long time, but we spend a lot of time just playing music and playing shows and focusing on that. And we haven't really dabbled too much into uh, the social media aspects and the marketing like we should have, you know, like, uh, right now we're really just focusing on, on, uh, the little things, you know, like putting ourselves out there and, and getting people, in, uh, motivated to be involved, you know, uh, having, you know, yeah. we would like yeah. to get on, on book, uh, on, on the bills, like some, some festivals or, you know, try to maybe, uh, yeah. you know, get, get out of California a little bit, maybe do like a small tour, uh, Arizona, Utah, Very good. stuff like that, just Vegas, you know, just a little bit outside of our realm, you know, just kind of move a little bit, move around, maybe maybe go up north a little bit and play some shit there, as long <laughs> as it's in my country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so can you tell me about the song Comfort Zone? Is there anything that you haven't told me about that song? Which song? Comfort Zone. Comfort Zone. Comfort Zone. Comfort Zone. Yeah, um, it's one of my favorite songs on the album, and it's really just a song that you can chill with a nice hot checklist and just have the time of your life. And that's just that song's all about good times and memories and having fun and just relaxing, hot dog. Dog. And It's all about just partying and and just feeling euphoric because that's what my band, this band, is all about, and that's what we've always been about is just this this feeling you get not only with music but life and just the greatest things you know and comfort yeah, zone comfort zone is like a culmination of our first album because that's what we're all about you know and as a lead guitar player you know it's like uh, I, you know I got a solo on every single song you know so <laughs> one of my, but, uh, but, but that song in particular is probably my favorite solo that I do on the album. And I want to nice. say... And not because, it's, not because it's more flashy or anything like that, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of feel in that one, you know, so... Yeah, it's probably... A lot of feel you know, in that solo. And it fades away during the solo, which is something... That was my idea, you know? It's like I wanted to leave the listeners wanting more, you know? Like, uh, nice. you know, like, like Randy Rhodes did on some solos, you know? He's still yeah. soloing as it fades away, and you're kind of wondering what he would have done if the track kept going or what he did do that they cut out you know um yeah we just we faded away right as it was getting getting going you know yeah and i just want to add quickly that uh for me i love that solo too and uh to me that solo is up there with solos from comfortably numb or stairway or boston's hitch a ride you know <laughs> stuff like that wow. solos with a lot of feeling like that uh, is similar to what Willie did on Comfort Zone, and I'm really, really very proud of our recording. And I think it's one of my best uh, singing performances on the album, and 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 the best all round recording. That's the also the only track that has uh, a bunch of acoustic. I love every. So yeah, you'll <laughs> nice. hear acoustic. You'll, you'll hear you'll hear every shakers. Show. You'll hear. Uh, tambourine there's yeah. percussion going on you yeah. know um marcus man this did a real good job on on all the percussion and all that stuff so right you know that we we kind of experimented a little more with that one awesome well this is comfort zone <laughs>
me Where'd you think I'll be? Well, it's here with all my friends Come on, women, why don't we go swimming? Just wanna see you smile for a little while. I'm only trying to bring about.
and that was comfort zone all right scott will it's been great talking to you but sadly we have to wrap up here soon so final questions are how can people get a hold of you get your cd and hear how awesome you guys are okay well first and foremost we have psychedelica.com that's our website and then um obviously uh most important would be uh, our facebook page which is you can either just search psychedelica in the search engine or psychedelica or facebook.com slash psychedelica 2012 um that was that was when we did our lineup change and stuff and we had a lot going on that year but yeah anyways uh that's our facebook page you know we have Reverb Nation is the same thing. Uh, psych- it's just Psychedelica. We have SoundCloud. We got Twitter. You know, we got all. We got pretty much every anywhere on the internet you can find music. You can find us. As far as the album goes, the album's for sale on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, and physical copies. And we have physical copies too. You know, just shoot us a message or go to our online store on the website. Hey, like. And if you buy a, the physical yeah. copies are better. I mean, you, yeah. you know, we had we really elaborated with the artwork One day we'll on the it. album. You know, um, we had a we had a <laughs> pretty good artist do, do the artwork. She's a, a lady named Kinga Britschke from from Hungary. Oh, she nice. did the artwork. Um, yeah, just uh, pretty much anywhere on the internet that you can find music, you can find us. Um, if you if you really want to listen to the album and you don't want to buy it, you can stream it for free on YouTube. Um, we got YouTube Music. Every, we got everything up there. Um, <clears throat> the mailing address you can you can email me personally at William dot Castle at Live dot com, and I'll get your emails. Or you can just message us on Facebook. You know, um, yeah, just find us on Facebook. We got an Instagram. You know, I'll, pretty much we're on everything. You know, just. <laughs> Search psychedelica and you will find us. <laughs> that is awesome, guys. All right, man. Well, I'm sorry to cut this short, but it's something we got to do. So thank you so much for your time and talking to me about your band. It sounds awesome. I'm really excited to see what you guys do in the future. Keep me in the loop and make sure I know what's going on with you guys, all right? Awesome, all right. man. Thanks pleasure. a lot. Pleasure talking to you, man. Yeah, pleasure. Awesome. Thank you again, guys. You have a great day, all right? All right, you do, man. That was Psychedelica. How'd you guys enjoy that? I had fun. I really did. I really enjoyed talking to them. Really cool bunch of guys. Really, I would work with them any time. Scott, however, there's something about that guy. I can't pinpoint it, but he gives me the rock vibe kind of like the vibe of seeing like the doors or the who or the beatles being interviewed uh it may just be me but that's the feeling i get from scott dude you you're rocker you know 60s rocker through and through brother (laughs) please scott don't take offense man it's it's only meant to be a compliment in any event Go check out Psychedelica. Go on to YouTube. Check out their videos. Go on to anywhere and find their music. They, these guys are really cool. It's really easy music just to lay back and enjoy. Um, some music is meant to pump you up and get you ready for the day. This, however, I really enjoy just sitting back and just you know zoning out on what they're doing. It's, it's really, really fun music. As always, when you go and find these guys, make sure that you tell them that you heard their interview here on the Local Music Revolution. I'm always really interested to hear what people think about the show. So, if you got something to say, contact me. Let me know. If you have any suggestions, let me know. If you have any bands that you would like to hear on the show, let me know. Facebook.com slash the local music revolution. That's the one I'm most prominent on because my phone is constantly with me. You can also contact me on Twitter at TLMR Podcast, on Instagram at the local music revolution, on YouTube, youtube.com slash the local music revolution, and of course at the WordPress the local music revolution dot wordpress dot com all of the links are on the description of this episode also 
Since the beginning of this podcast, we have been featured on iTunes and on Stitcher. So, go to the podcast section of the iTunes store and look up The Local Music Revolution. We'll pop up. Subscribe, add, rate, and comment the podcast. I really, really want to know what you guys think. For you Android users like myself, go get on Stitcher, download the app, sign up, look up The Local Music Revolution, and we'll be there. Plus, if you guys are interested, I'll give you some names of some podcasts I really enjoy, let you hear and let you see what you think about those. A big thank you to Scott and everybody at Stringjoy. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for being part of this podcast and being a sponsor. If you guys are interested in the strings, please go to stringjoy.com and go and check out the custom sets or the tension base sets. Um, when you're at checkout, please use the promo code LOCAL, that's L-O-C-A-L, and you will get a discount for being my awesome, incredible listeners. Again, I want to reiterate this. If you know of a band or a musician or a solo artist or a company that works in the music business that will want to be interviewed, please send them to my WordPress, the local music revolution dot wordpress dot com there is an interview sign up sheet i need them to fill that out so i get all the basic information once i get that we can start the process of the interview and everything will be awesome next thursday i will have a guest that actually was previously on in the first week of the show um his name is daniel uh he fronts the band farouk if you want to hear what he's got to say go back listen to episode five featuring farouk Daniel's coming back on to talk about his solo project and everything surrounding his solo project. Currently, his solo project and Farouk are on tour, so check them out. I will leave all the information um, that's applicable here in the description for next week's episode. Until then, this is the Local Music Revolution. I am Ogre. You are awesome. Thank you guys very much for listening. As always... Take care and be good, everyone. Is the local this music is revolution? The local this music is. revolution. The local music this revolution. Is. Local music this revolution. Is. Local music revolution. Local music revolution. Local music revolution. Local music revolution.